What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with Invincible. Yes, we are. We are back with our weekly video on Invincible. Of course, it always goes on Patreon a week ahead of time and then we release it on YouTube later. But what we end up doing here is we pick up initially a few months ago, if you guys recall when Mark fought Angstrom Levy, when they were fighting in that kind of alternate reality and Mark had presumably beat him to death, right? He killed Angstrom and then just left him to die. What we end up learning here is that instead a kind of portal was open and Langstrom was pulled through. And despite the fact that his face was just pummeled to mush, I mean, his head was just pummeled to absolute mush, he still survived just by sheer force of will. This guy is nothing if not dedicated to destroying Mark. You cannot look at me with a straight face and tell me that a man who looks like that and survives just having the desire to kill Mark is not a man of just absolute fortitude and dedication, right? Now, his henchmen that kind of bring him back here are not really his henchmen per se. And we'll find out there's a little more about them here in a little bit. Instead, what we end up doing is picking up seemingly in the immediate aftermath of the last video that we did, which basically kicks off on day one. And this is the invasion of all the alternate reality marks. Not all, but like 20 alternate reality versions of Invincible. All who have been summoned here by Angstrom Levy for the purpose of destroying Mark, right? Literally just like not only destroying him, but just breaking him down piece by piece. These guys crush through everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything everything right like they're attacking every major city paris france they're attacking the krillin and russia right the head of the russian government strangely enough one of these guys meets spawn which is weird you only see it for a short second right you only see it for a short second for one panel but mark fights spawn now here's the thing you are probably not going to see this in the in the amazon series right you're probably not going to see that on there because as far as i'm aware when it comes to the to the amazon series amazon only has the rights to invincible a little bit of an explanation here for those of you guys just quick super simple explanation nothing super drawn out here image comics skybound all those companies they are not like marvel and dc marvel and dc they have a shared universe marvel's x-men crossover with the avengers who cross over with the fantastic four and they team up and grab huge books and different things like that dc comics has the justice league and they've got the teen titans and all that kind of stuff and they cross over in different books right batman superman so on and so forth when it comes to independent publishers they don't necessarily have that and the reason why is because marvel for example if you're writing for them they have control over the characters so you're like i want to write the x-men and you're Marvel's like, okay, cool, but you can only write them within the certain limits of as we describe them, right? So you can't necessarily have the X-Men become like a space-faring team like Guardians of the Galaxy and they just stay there. I mean, maybe you can if Marvel gives you permission. When it comes to things like this, Skybound and, and Image and so on, they're a publishing house and that's all they do. The creative stories themselves are 100% up to the writers. They can do whatever they want with them. And then they contract with a company like Skybound or Image and then all they do is just put their comics out there to the public. So that's why you can potentially potentially see something like this in the comics where you have like Invincible crossing over with Spawn, but you don't see it all the time. You don't see it quite readily. But because of the fact that Amazon likely only owns the rights to Invincible and they don't own the rights to Todd McFarlane's Spawn, you're probably never going to see this, right? You're probably never going to see this in the Amazon series unless Todd McFarlane allows it to happen. But it's a cool thing here because with all these different versions of Mark literally just running around, cutting a swath through, through the entirety of the world <laughs> and attacking all these versions, Mark actually ends up coming across a version of himself. Now, here's the funny thing about this. At the initial indication here, we don't really get a lot in terms of their origins. All we really get are just small little drops and tidbits and things along those lines. But Mark facing off against this alternate version of himself is kind of nuts, right? Because he sees this version of Mark as kind of a, a pale reflection of himself, right? These guys are all exceedingly violent. They are, in effect, versions of Mark that became villains. And they've all been brought here because they're capable of doing villainous things. Now, what you also have while well, that's popping off, you've got Mark's mom who's watching the news, you've got Mark's friends who are watching the news, and they're like, we all thought it was Invincible, but now there's something like 20 of them, so they all seem to be alternate versions of Invincible. Even the, the members of like the team team and the Guardians of the Globe thought that Mark was a bad guy, thought he was the one doing all this. And it's one of those things where it's it's easy to play off of, right? Because when you look at like what, what Omni-Man did and Mark's the son of Omni-Man, is it really that hard to believe that Mark just snapped one day and then just lost his mind and started tearing up the whole world? I mean, nobody knew that Omni-Man was a villain until he was, right? Like nobody knew that was the case. It's not as though it was slowly building up to it and he was committing a series of robberies or he killed the Guardians of the Globe in front of the world. He did it in secret, did it in private, right? And with the exception of people like Cecil or individuals who could who could dig into it, right? Like Detective Demon, that kind of a thing. There weren't really a whole lot of people who actually knew what was going on. But here, Mark's ripping it all up after Omni-Man did it probably within a, a year or so ago. And so it's kind of nuts. Now you've also got Kid Omni-Man who's kind of doing the same thing, facing off 
off against these alternate reality versions of Mark. But again, we don't get a whole lot of explanation here, but what you do switch over to is the Pentagon. And the Pentagon, some of these guys are able to take out one of these alternate reality versions of Mark. And then when the question, when, when Cecil's like, okay, like get people on the horn and his little robot assistant guy asks like, who do we get, right? He literally turns into Gary Oldman. He's like, everyone. <laughs> That's literally what it turns into, right? The Guardians of the Globe, the whole nine yards. Every single superhero team that can be called is brought in to face off against all these alternate reality versions of Invincible. And that's literally where Cecil's telling him, like, look, guys, here's the deal, right? Omni-Man was one thing. He was a hoss, right? This guy, there's nothing we really could have done to have stopped him. And at the end of the day, if anything, if we, if we did find some way to defeat him, quote unquote, it would just be buying time. With Mark, we kind of stand a chance against him because he's not necessarily on the same level as his father 20 versions of mark i don't know what to tell you right it's just we have to do whatever we can to stop this as fast as we possibly can and so you you have like some pretty no holds barred stuff cecil tells them all bets are off right like all the limits the the restrictions don't kill unless you have to do whatever you have to do to take these guys down kill them it doesn't matter and so all these different superheroes some of which we've seen some of which we haven't seen are all literally just killing these alternate reality versions of mark everywhere they can and at the end of the day it doesn't matter one of these guys right just one mark to give you guys perspective here just one alternate reality version of mark was enough to kill the entire guardians of the globe now one of the bigger moments here comes from rex explode as you guys know rex is kind of a dick right like seemingly he's selfish he only really cares about himself but here's a funny thing rex has it where it counts right that's the big difference at the end of the day when it comes down to it he's the guy you want on your side and the way this plays out is that where these different versions of mark are kind of going nuts and they're killing all you know the this version of mark is killing the guardians of the globe that Darkwing actually steps in and whisks one of them away to the Shadowverse to basically and then kind of sacrifices himself in the process to take out that version of Mark but the damage is done right I mean this guy's been pummeling the Guardians of the Globe not only that he absolutely crushed Monster Girl and there's still a Mark here and that's the crazy thing because at that point it's kind of like okay like let's do what we can to try to take this guy out Monster Girl seems to be completely out of commission she's not dead but she's totally out of commission you end up having Robot who grabs her and manages to get her away but only at the behest of Rex Rex explode rex explodes like get out of here you know leave this guy to me right i'll take care of this guy and so what ends up happening is rex explode when the question is kind of asked like how could you possibly beat me right like i could just pop your head off your shoulders i took out your entire team i could literally kill you right now go find the other three who flew away and then kill them he's like you've got absolutely nothing that you can detonate you've got no weapons your wrist launcher is totally drained out you have nothing that you can do here he's like what what are you possibly going to charge and explode and rex explode says my skeleton and just detonates himself and in doing so takes out that version of mark in the process rexplode kills himself in order to save like the rest of the team from just that one guy right now you end up having cecil who shows up to the actual mark right the real mark the main mark and says like we need you here man but adam eve has been like seriously injured so much so that she's in like the icu right hooked up to like a, a mask and everything sitting in the hospital and mark's like no i'm not going anywhere i'm staying here with adam eve right she needs me here you have the entire of the world's superheroes at your disposal you can do this without me and ultimately cecil's like man i really hope so but at the end of the day it really isn't enough there are a lot of these marks that have been taken out but then you get to day three and day three you have eight marks left and that's it there's really nothing else like everybody's basically been conquered like the world has just been completely and totally taken out angstrom levy's his whole plot his scheme came to fruition and so he basically shows back up to where the rest of the marks are and he says okay so here's the idea right this world's in ruins this Invincible's reputation is totally destroyed. People will always hate and fear him. And that was the goal of what he was shooting for. It's not enough to defeat Invincible, that he has to kind of make him, he has to essentially ostracize him from society. He has to put him in a place where he can never operate as a superhero in the world again. No one will ever trust him. The government will always watch him. And if at all possible, they'll in, in prison him, right? They'll incarcerate him. Whatever the case is, they'll never let him go back to the life that he had before. And he says, there's only one thing left. I want to physically deform this guy. I want to disfigure this guy i want him to know the pain that i feel and so he tells all the other marks find him and bring him to me and they're like no no we're not gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> they literally say no. And the reason why is because the extent of the bargain that was made between Angstrom Levy and these alternate reality versions of Mark is that these versions here, the ones that had like killed their mom, right? Or the ones who had sided with Omni-Man or even the ones who had killed Omni-Man and taken his place. Like these different versions of Mark that are here, the deal that was made between them and Angstrom Levy was once they basically laid waste to this world, left this place in shambles, that he would help them expand their empires into other dimensions. So seemingly they've all conquered 
conquered their worlds, right? They've all conquered Earth, whether in the name of the Viltrumite Empire or in their own name. They've conquered all their Earths, maybe even the universe itself, and they're looking to expand out, expand their sphere of influence into other realities. And so denying this is like, no, 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 like we're, we're just gonna like, we'll just leave, right? Like send us back and allow us to achieve our goal or we're gonna kill you. And so ultimately he ends up sending them into other dimensions. Now, here's the thing. When they all get moved into this, this alternate reality, they're all in the same place, right? Like they're, they're all locked away in the same alternate reality, which is a terrible decision because now they're all pissed off at him, right? So it's not enough to put them in the same place to where they could presumably get out. Now you're gonna have them all coming after you. Following that, you end up having the actual Mark who leaves and comes directly at Angstrom Levy, right? And this guy is coming at him with a vengeance. Like before it was, oh my God, I can't believe I killed him. Now there's a desire to, right? Now there's a, a desire among Mark, kill this guy, right? Not only Mark, but his younger brother and seemingly everybody else to take this guy out, do him in, right? Just, just kill this guy. Initially, his younger brother's like, look at what he did around. Look, look at what he did to the world. Like kill him, right? Look at what he did to everything. Like he's like, he's like this guy right here, right? This is an example of what happens when you stop yourself from killing someone and look at what he did, right? Like if this guy was a, was a person who could have been redeemed, he would have been redeemed, but you gave him an opportunity to live. You gave him a choice. Either go back to being, having some semblance of a regular life and stop being a villain, or go back to being a villain, right? Do your own, your own criminal thing. And he's like, you gave him an option here. Men like that cannot be allowed to live. Criminals cannot be allowed to live. If given the choice between being a good guy or being a bad guy, they will always be a bad guy. Why? Because it's what they know. Stop being a milk sock, right? Stop being weak at the knees. If you'd killed him, none of this would have happened in the first place. And that's a legitimate argument, right? That's a credible argument. The proof is in the pudding. This all happened because Mark allowed him to live. The world has basically been torn to shambles. Millions and millions of people have died because of a poor decision on behalf of Mark. And that's the aspect of being a superhero that we don't like to talk about. There comes a time when those folks just gotta die. And for Angstrom Levy, it was a long time ago. But because of Mark's poor decision-making, he basically, he set the stage and he effectively allowed Angstrom Levy to do everything that he's done here, right? And so it's one of those things where Mark's like, you know what? You're right. Like, you're absolutely right. Like, he literally tells his brother, you're 100% right. I'm killing this guy guy, right? Now, Angstrom Levy ends up opening a portal and teleporting away back to his base of operations. Of course, Mark grabs his arm, his arm gets cut off in the process, and then in turn, when he shows up to his henchmen, he's like, I need you guys to get me back to normal. You know, like, like we need his blood. You guys have to help me. Like, we got to go take out Mark. And the response they make is no. Promises were made, Angstrom Levy. You gave us assurances. We had a deal and you failed. You do not get a second chance. You do not give us orders. You work for us now. And so then you switch to day four, what's left of the world, the world in complete and total shambles here. And Mark overlooking all of it just has, well, you know what guys, you know what guys, you know what people, I think this is a good place to end it. A lot of you guys are just like, no! <laughs> A lot of you guys are pissed. Cliffhangers. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next week. Peace.